morning friends today we'll be covering a very important topic uh, of immunology that is the basic fundamentals of immunology this will be a three series lecture and today that we'll cover the first part so starting with the first part we'll have two more uh, lectures and then uh, i think we'll be able to uh, cover the whole topic of immunology of course there is another uh, video on the hla which will cover the basic part of the hla which has already been released so i am dr mohit chaudhary and i'll be accompanied with my colleague dr k jaya gauri who is going to be talking about uh, these fundamentals of immunology so immunity what is immunity it refers to the process by which a host organism protects itself from the attack by both the external and the internal agent and from the non self and the abnormal self elements there are two major mechanism of immune system innate or the natural immunity and the second one is the acquired or the adaptive immunity coming to the differences between innate or natural immunity and acquired or adaptive immunity innate immunity is the primary line of defense it is very since it's the primary line of defense it starts very early in an evolutionary development it is very primitive you can say it gives a non specific immunity and it is naturally present at birth it is immediately available to fight or respond the infection when it comes it comprises of both physical biochemical mechanical and combinational mechanism and there is no alteration of these mechanism during the repeated exposure however when we see acquired or adaptive immunity it is an immunity that supplements the already present innate immunity it is late evolutionarily development so seen in the vertebrates and it is specific that is the major difference between innate and acquired immunity it is acquired by contact to a specific element and therefore it is specific against that element the initial contact triggers one of the mechanism that is the memory part and response is better on the subsequent exposure because of the memory coming to the cellular and the humoral con- components cellular as the name says it's involves the cells the cellular defense includes various cells of the immune system that cause direct cytotoxicity or direct destruction through the lymphokines that is the chemicals produced from the lymphocytes example macrophages the t cells the dendritic cells however the humoral components comprises of the b cells which in turn turn into plasma cells and produce antibodies along with them the component system so this cellular and humoral con- components comprise uh, the main part of this immunity it is responsible for the recognition and elimination of foreign and abnormal self elements coming to the various cells and various participants in this immunity so first line and second line of defense will be there in the innate or the natural immunity and acquired or adaptive immunity which is the third line of dis- defense will have the both the cellular and the humoral concern however in innate immunity you can see there is both physical there is biochemical humoral and cellular component physical when i say it means the intact skin the mucous membrane cilia the cough reflex the basic physical barriers that we have the biochemical barriers would be our various secretions like sweat tears saliva mucus lower ph ph of the vagina and the stomach the the second line of defense in the natural immunity or the innate immunity will be the cellular part would be phagocytic cells these are the cells which under which can perform phagocytosis that is engulfing of the uh, organism these include the macrophage or the dendritic cells the monocytes the polymorpho nuclear site nuclear cells and the nk cells the humoral part will comprise of the complement the cytokines and the inflammatory reaction compared to this acquired or adaptive immunity which is also the third line of defense we have cellular and humoral components the cellular components comprises of the t and the b lymphocytes which are the t cells can be further uh, distinguished into th cells tc cells and the t memory cells the b cell can be plasma cells which thereby produce the antibodies later and the memory cells the humoral component is comprised of cytokines the complement and the b cells which produce these antibodies so these antibody antigen reaction is the main third line defense 
of our body. This is a pictorial representation of the same thing. You can see whenever a pathogen tries to enter the body, he will have to face both the first, second and the third line of defense. Our first line of defense would be the physical and the bio. We have physiological barriers like skin, mucous membrane, cilia, body temperature. If it passes through the same, it we have to encounter the second line of defense that is the innate immunity which is present right from the development but it's not very specific. The neutrophil, basophil, macrophages, mast cell, dendritic cells and NK cells are a part of it. The third line of defense is the adaptive immunity or the acquired immunity which comprises of the cellular and the humoral component. Cellular components of course the T cells and the B cells and the plasma cells and the humoral component comprises of the antibodies and cytokines. So these are the players, the innate immunity, the adaptive immunity and you can see they have an overlap of this NK cells which take part both in innate immunity and the adaptive immunity. Now coming to the players of innate immunity, I would now like to call upon my colleague Dr. K. Jaya Gauri who is going to take you through the uh, players of innate immunity, the specific players which orchestrate the immunity part of our body and uh, over to you Dr. K. Jaya Gauri. Um, hello everyone. In this session, we'll be seeing about the players of innate immunity. The main players of the innate immunity are the phagocytes. Phagocytic cells are those cells that are present in the peripheral circulation which identifies the foreign molecules that overcame the initial physical and biochemical barrier, it engulfs, digests them with their vesicular enzymes. This process is known as phagocytosis. There are two major phagocytic cells. The first group is the polymorpho nu uh, nuclear cells, that is the neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils. The second major group is the mononuclear cells, that is the monocytes and the macrophages. These phagocytic cells bind with the lysosomes that are present inside, forming phagolysosomes. These phagolysosomes further get destroyed by the cysteine protease enzymes. An activated phagocytic cell releases soluble polypeptide substances that are known as cytokines. Cytokines has various functions on other cells, on other systems and has opposing actions with each other also. This is a pictorial representation of phagocytosis. As you can see, there is a WBC, there is a bacteria. The, the WBC tries to engulf the bacteria and ingests it. When the amount of bacteria keeps on increasing, the cell size also increases and further there occurs a lysis of the cell. This lysis of the cell, that is the dead WBC, is what we call as pus. The dying WBC releases cytokines that causes inflammation and chemoattraction. Inflammation and chemoattraction leads to additional collection of WBC at the site of the inflammation arena. Coming to cytokines, the first group of cytokines that we need to discuss is the interleukins. There are various number of interleukins discovered all through these years. We will see the function of each interleukin in detail. Interleukin 1 is a pro-inflammatory cytokine, that is, it stimulates the production of other cytokines also. Interleukin 2 stimulates T cell, B cell and NK cell proliferation. Interleukin 3 is a hematopoietic growth factor. Interleukin 4 stimulates B cell to produce IgE immunoglobulin. Interleukin 5 stimulates B cell to produce IgA. Interleukin 6 stimulates B cells to get activated into plasma cells, which produces individual type of immunoglobulin. Interleukin 7 stimulates B cell and T cell at the bone marrow and thymus. Interleukin 8 is a chemotactic agent, that is, through chemicals, we attract other kinds of cells. Interleukin 9 stimulates proliferation of T cell. Interleukin 10 down regulates the MHC class 2. Uh, invariably reduces inflammation. Interleukin 11 helps in the differentiation of pro B cell and megakaryocyte into activated B cell and platelet respectively. Interleukin 12 stimulates natural killer cell and stimulates the cytotoxicity of CD8 plus T cell. 
interleukin 13 upregulates the MHC class 2 which is opposite to that of interleukin 10. Interleukin 14 stimulates proliferation of activated B cell. Interleukin 15 stimulates the proliferation of not only B cell but also T and NK cell. Interleukin 16 induces MHC class 2 which is similar to that of interleukin 13. Interleukin 17 is also a pro-inflammatory interleukin which is similar to interleukin 1. Interleukin 18 stimulates T cell to produce interferons. 19 modulates the T helper cell. 20 and 21 regulates inflammation and hematopoiesis respectively. Interleukin 22 has been discovered to inhibit interleukin 4 which produces IgE. Interleukin 23 also stimulates T cell to produce interferon like that of 18 but here it is specific to interferon gamma. Interleukin 24 stimulates TNF that is tumor necrosis factor interleukin 1 and 16. So interleukin 25 stimulates interleukin 4, 5 and 13. So as we see cytokines has various functions among each other also. So here are some of the mnemonics created by some creative minds. As we can see here interleukin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 can be remembered as hot T-bone steak. That is 1 for hot fever, 2 stimulates T-cells, 3 bone marrow, 4 STE that is stimulates IgE, 5 stimulates IgA and 6 stimulates acute phase reactants. Another thing is Interleukin 7, when 7 is inverted, it looks like a L, that is lymphoid lineage. IL3, when 3 is rotated, it looks like M, which is myeloid lineage. Another mnemonic is interleukin 10, down regulates MHC class 2 and reduces inflammation. So, the 1 and 0 looks like a T and an O. The next important cytokine that we will be seeing now is colony stimulating factors. Colony stimulating factors has various functions in the hematopoietic lineages. First thing is it suppresses the apopto apoptosis of a hematopoietic cell. Second thing is it, it helps in lineage commitment. A particular type of CSF will stimulate one lineage and inhibit the other. The third thing is it induces maturation of a hematopoietic stem cell to a final cell. The next thing is it stimulates proliferation of the hematopoietic lineages. Last but not the least, it stimulates the function in a mature cell. For example, in neutrophil, it stimulates phagocytosis and uh, peroxide, superoxide production. Uh, in a monocyte, it also stimulates phagocytosis and lysozyme production. The next cytokine we will be seeing is the tumor necrosis factor. The tumor necrosis factor has been associated with various organs and, in, and with various functions. Starting with macrophages, it stimulates phagocytosis. In monocytes, it stimulates cytokine release. In the endothelium, it stimulates the production of cytokines, adhesins, coagulation factors and nitric oxide favoring vasodilation and pro-coagulable state. In the B cells, it stimulates the production of antibodies. In the T cells, it stimulates the production of cytokines such as interleukin 2 and interferons. It also acts on organs like brain stimulating fever, sleep, etc. It acts on the liver producing acute phase reactants. It acts on the adipocyte. It inhibits lipoprotein lipase. In the fibroblast, it stimulates the production of collagenase. In the myocyte, it, it causes proteolysis and it acts on osteoclast favoring bone resorption. The next important cytokine is the interferon. Interferon is a cytokine produced by a virus infected cell. The virus infected cell wants to convey to the nearby cells that it has been affected and it wants to protect the other nearby cells from getting infected. So when an interferon acts on a macrophage, what it does is it produces a pro-inflammatory state, it causes tumorocidal action, it produces nitric oxide and chemokines. When the interferon acts on a dendritic cell, there is maturation of a dendritic cell and upregulation of MHC class 1 and 2 which in turn causes excess antigen presentation and excess immune response. When an interferon acts on a T cell, when it acts on a T helper cell to be specific, it stimulates the production and differentiation of a T helper cell and favors further interferon production. 
when it acts on a cytotoxic T cell, it favors the uh, production and activity of the cytotoxic T cell also. The interferon inhibits the T regulatory cell. T regulatory cell is nothing but an inhibitory T cell which inhibits immunity. So when interferon inhibits an inhibitory cell, we get a positive re immune response. The next important cytokine is the transforming growth factor. Transforming growth factor is nothing but an inhibitory uh, cytokine. What it does is it inhibits B cell, inhibits T helper cell, inhibits cytotoxic T lymphocyte and inhibits NK cell. It also inhibits other antigen presenting cells like macrophages and dendritic cell. In case of T regulatory cell, I told you it's an inhibitory cell. So an inhibitory cytokine will actually stimulate the inhibitory T cell. In case of apoptosis, there is a biphasic response that is TGF stimulates as well as inhibits apoptosis depending on the situation. In case of tumor to be specific, there is a biphasic response with regards to TGF. In early stages of the tumor, there is growth inhibition by the TGF, but in late stages, it is the TGF that helps in metastasis of the tumor. TGF also helps in chemotaxis and angiogenesis through vascular endothelial growth factor pathway. TGF also stimulates angiotensin 2 and connective tissue growth factor to favor fibrosis. That's all about the players of innate immunity. Stay tuned for part 2 in which we'll be dealing about the players of adaptive immunity. We'll be dealing in detail about antigen and complement system. Thank you.